And welcome in. It is the Nightcap right here on BearcatJournal.com. Brought to you, as always, by our good friends at Galactic Fried Chicken. Tomorrow is the day, Aaron. The return in Dayton, Kentucky of Galactic Fried Chicken. Finally. Finally. The chicken is back in Dayton. Uh, (laughs) They've been closed for the holidays. Back open tomorrow, Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, lunch and dinner get yourself down to galactic fried chicken i know you've been missing it get yourself down there and pick up your order soon it's been a couple weeks i know it's time a lot of people are waiting i'm waiting maybe i'll stop down tomorrow and buy some chicken for the nurses i spoil the nurses you know how you get taken care of when you got a three-week stay in the hospital aaron food you bring the nurses like uh, a couple Mio's pizzas. You bring in some galactic fried chicken. You know, just do what you got to do. <laughs> I mean, if they're anything like me, quickest way to my heart is through my stomach. Exactly. Precisely, Smith. All right, let's get going. Um, not a ton going on today. We did have Lorenz Metz uh, declare for the draft, I guess, a couple days ago. Kind of. Slid under the radar on Instagram. Ty Van Fossen declared for the NFL draft. So, um, do, do we need to address not doing a show last night? I think it's pretty understandable why a show last night just wasn't smart. There was a lot of conflicting information and a lot of rumors flying around. I felt weird about sports about last what night. happened. Yeah, I just I didn't. Same reason we're not doing. Part of the punctuation tonight, so. Yeah, it's just a weird, that, it's a lot of weird stuff that happens in sports, but that specifically, like, I, I talked to a friend of mine tonight who was there, and she said the people next to her, like, zoomed in on their phone, like, to what was happening, and they're like, they're giving him chest compressions. Like, I can't imagine yeah. at a sporting event, like, seeing that, and, like, the the mortality of it all. You know, well, if, I mean, friend friend of of the show, Clay Snowden, was there. He said he was going to go to the game when he was on with us last week, and he said yeah. it was awful. Yeah. So I it just it didn't feel right, especially as there was so much unknown. Um, that just have you know, we like to be pretty lighthearted and have fun with yeah. the show. It wasn't the time to be lighthearted and and have fun and laugh and and joke around. So. Right. We took last night off. We're back tonight. Um, prayers to to Demar Hamlin, and, and I'm not a I'm not the most religious guy in the world, but I mean, all indications are he's a really good dude, yeah, and a guy that worked his way. I mean, he he's taken the path a lot of Bearcats have taken. Like he was a six round pick. He was already a pretty important factor uh, in his second season on a Buffalo defense that's very very good. Um, they, they said tonight is ox there. He's about 50%. Yeah. His uncle breathing on his own. His uncle addressed the media. Yeah. So, um, here's to him continuing to get better. Cause that was terrifying, terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, but the show must go on. Uh, today we had the oversight committee or whatever the committee is called. I feel like they should be an oversight personally, <laughs> but um, the NCAA basically approved or, or it put it in the hand of the sports, the individual sports that the recommendation is to expand to about 25% uh, of the participating members for NCAA sanctioned postseason events. So that would include The NCAA tournament, which, if you expand it out to that number, takes it up to around 90 teams. So you would be adding roughly, I would guess, just to keep it the math right, you probably have to go to 92 or somewhere that, I don't know if 90 works exactly or how the bracketing, whatever you would do to make the bracketing work, but... Um, thoughts, Aaron, on the NCAA tournament potentially 
expanding to 90 teams. I think it was your buddy Jeff Goodman who actually said 64 was perfect. 68 is okay. I don't like going to more than that and I know why they're doing it. It's it's all about dollars. It's all it's not really about giving anybody the Cinderella's more chances because they're going to be the ones left out if you if you do expand to this number. They're not going I mean I, I don't well, it, it just diminishes a number, their a number diminishes. like 90. You're not going to be able to keep this will include more mid majors if you expand to a number like 90. Maybe. No, I mean, because there's there's only so many I'll believe power when five I five teams. I'll believe it when I see it because as you but see then, uh, it's a numbers game, Aaron. As you see the Big 10 and the SEC and everybody trying to expand they are also going to be demanding more spots because they're not going to say, well, we had a 500 record. You're not going to leave out this team at 500 over. Nobody gets left out of 500 from a power conference. Very, very, very rarely. And you're like, you would have to go like six and six in your non-conference and lose a bunch of buy games to go through a power conference and not make it in a five one. I'm just saying, I'll believe it when I see it, that they're making more room for mid majors at that point, as opposed to, well, but what I'm saying is it's math. There's only so many power five power six. If you include the big East teams. So there's only, I think if you like with everything all considered, it's right around 80 and there's going to be 20 of those teams that are dog shit that, that, are you know 10 and 20 or 13 and and whatever 18 or whatever that they they have no chance of making it excuse my cynicism if i don't think that the ncaa is going to try and do something to help the mid majors as opposed oh to i'm not the saying they're going to do something to help the mid majors i'm saying just by sheer number there's still going to be plenty of mid majors in the field if you go to 90 now make no mistake they're going to they take sub five. They're going to take sub five hundred teams over mid majors. There we go. There we go. That's my point. Like you're just going to see more sub five hundred team. Like I don't know that I want to see dog shit four and eight in conference teams. That that wouldn't happen. One, you have to be five hundred unless you win your conference tournament. Like to get in that large, you have to. Your record has to be five hundred. Okay. Well, I, th- but there are. It's not going to be my point being, it's not going to be 75, 80 power five teams, and then like scraps thrown to the conference champions of the other. Like, there's at 90, there's going to be plenty of mid major teams in the field. It just there will be more power five teams because this wouldn't be happening if it didn't provide an opportunity to get more power five teams. It just seems. I don't know. It just seems too many teams. Like, I don't know why you need to expand from 68 to 90. That's a lot of teams. I mean, it's 25%. If you look at the NFL, roughly 50% of the teams get into the NFL playoffs. If you look at the NBA, roughly 50% of the teams get into the NBA playoffs. If you look at Major League Baseball, roughly 50% of the teams get into the playoffs. Baseball only just changed that in the course of the last what, what, three years? But, yes, but almost. that's where they're all at. Understood. Um, I and, and it's a it's a one and done deal. It's not like you know the NBA where your playoffs last three months. And I'm all for parity. I I just I don't know. Here's here's my only argument. Like, do I think 64 is the perfect number? Yes. Am I going to complain? about getting more basketball games to watch. No. Like, ultimately, that's... You're just going to get, like, 12 more basketball games to watch at the end of the season. Makes the road longer for a team trying to get it would to add. Top. It would add one round of, like, play it. Basically, essentially, I think the way you would have to do it is you would add, like, one round of playoff games where all the lower seeds would be playing themselves in to the tournament. Like the, the one through eight seeds would all be protected with the all bye. the mid, 
all the mid majors weird. <laughs> They're all going to knock each other out in the first round. But then after you know nine through whatever Again. would have to play their way in. Like like I said, th this is where you would have to excuse my cynicism. But yeah, of course it's going to benefit the big programs and just we'll, we'll just half the mid majors in the first round. I mean. They're called the Autonomous Five for a reason. Well, it doesn't mean that they're worse than a eight and eight or uh, whatever a, a five hundred Rutgers team. Rutgers that just beat number one Purdue. I'm just throwing out a team that's not generally good. I know, but when you play in a power conference, you get a chance to do something like not be very good and also beat the number one team in the nation that year. <laughs> That's why their resumes are always strong enough to get in with a 500 conference record or below. Because guess what? This is a good, it will be a good thing for UC. Because right now, the Big 12 is a bitch, bro. Yeah. We talked about that on uh, with, with Tobes, where you have the top 10 schedules, uh, remaining schedules, all belong to Big 12 teams. When you look at strength of schedule, the yeah. hardest schedules left in the country, one through 10, are the 10 teams in the Big 12. Yeah. So nobody, let, let's say West Virginia has the number 10 strength of schedule in the country. No, one through nine are also the rest of the teams in the Big 12. Number 11 <laughs> is everybody, starts everybody else. They are projected right now. Um, there are, I think, two teams projected to go 12 and 6. Uh, two teams projected to go 11 and 7. And then everybody else between 10 and 8 and 8 and 10. And all 10 teams, if they do that, are projected to be in the NCAA tournament. And, uh, I don't, I don't mind building in a little bit of a lifeline because <laughs> there's a chance you can, you can go eight and 10 in that league. And if you don't take care of business in the out of conference, like you could, you could miss the tournament and have eight top 50 wins. I'd hope that you'd be doing well in out of conference. So if you're going to be. Well, you have an injury or you remotely have, relevant. you know, you have a new team that's coming together at the start of the season you lose a game or two that you shouldn't. But the point being, you can go eight and ten in the conference, have eight top fifty wins, and be on the bubble. It's crazy. It's nuts. I would I prefer it always be sixty four teams, or I, I don't like sixty eight teams. That you get two games on Tuesday, two games on Wednesday. Those are nice little like they're not even appetizers; they're like hors d'oeuvres. If there wasn't other opportunities for teams to play postseason games, such as the NIT and whatever the other one is, um, then I guess I'd be more upset and trying to say, yeah, no, these guys should have other opportunities to play. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I just I, – I don't know. Like, if we get another, like, two nights of, of college basketball that, like – it means something. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be upset. So they want 25% for every sport, though. Uh, they don't. They, no, they recommended. They recommended. But it's they also one of the things they also did was they are now allowing kind of each sport to have their own governing body where they can make independent decisions for their own sports. Uh, that to avoid have to bureaucracy. It doesn't have to go through all the NCAA's bullshit. Um, so this is, like, I know there's a bunch of people in basketball that I don't know of really anybody other than, well, here's the problem. I don't know of anybody other than conference commissioners that want to change the NCAA basketball tournament. The only reason in conference commissioners want to do that is what you mentioned. Like, they're going to have 16, 18, 20 teams in their conference. You can't have seven teams get in and 13 teams be left out because that means your conference is constantly churning coaches. 
hiring and firing because mm -hmm. a lot of these places expect to win. You got anything else? I mean, I'm, I don't know. It, it's, it's messy. I don't, I don't love change in anything. <laughs> so I'm more apt to say a, a traditionalist like again i still think 68 is annoying i'm i'm still good with 64 so yeah I you don't, don't watch the tuesday and wednesday games you don't watch the playing games i really don't i just check the scores to see who i need to worry about projecting into and generally speaking i don't even so you're a those. bracket guy like you're not a college basketball guy yeah i mean i watch you see so you're not a college basketball guy yeah yeah Right, like it's that's not it's not neither here nor there. That doesn't I make it a bad thing. I don't I don't tune in very often to watch other teams play. No, right. I'm a college basketball junkie. I always have been. I have. I'm watching Marquette and St. John's. I had on earlier. Um, I'm watching Kentucky and LSU, which is at halftime. Uh, I was watching Syracuse and Louisville a little, a little bit ago. Like if there's if there's a college basketball game on, there's a good chance. I have watched some of it. Will that change now that January 1st has come and gone? Maybe. We'll see. If you got <laughs> something right, <laughs> who knows? Don't. No, don't. Don't, 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 don't. If you're not a college basketball person, do not try to dip your toes into gambling on college basketball. If I'm throwing a couple bucks here or there on it, whatever. I'm not talking about... I, I'm, I'm talking in general. In ge like, it's not a... It's not an easy sport to bet because Vegas is almost always within two points of the line either way. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they're always – it's a, every game's a coin flip, whether you're going to win or lose. That sounds like pretty decent odds, 50-50. It's probably more 47-53. <laughs> House always wins. House always wins. <laughs> All those buildings in Vegas didn't build, build themselves, Aaron. No, no. So, uh, so what's that do for football, though? Nothing. Football is not an NCAA championship. So they don't have really any control over the football system. Okay. The NCAA basically doesn't make uh, all the money. You know, they talk about like bowl payouts and what the conference gets and what the school gets and da 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 da. The NCAA makes no money on the football system so that they have they have very the presidents and in, in 80s and whatnot have very carefully protected the golden goose there the espn cartel yeah all right that's the nightcap we'll see you tomorrow night pcj pod nightcap all that good stuff thanks to galactic fried chicken this is the nightcap right here on bearcatjournal.com see ya